Hi everyone, this is Bikyong. Okay, now um, we're going to do uh, iSCSI multipath on vSphere 5. And the enhancement in vSphere 5 is that you no longer have to use commands that you used to use in vSphere 4, as you can see from my previous video. Of course, you can still use back the commands using ESXCLI. However, um, since you have the GUI, why not just use it? So here you can see that I have a server here, a ESX server running ESX 5.0 and I have a Windows machine, a VM, okay, currently hosted on the other host because here I'm going to configure my iSCSI software adapter and we got to take note of the name also, it's VMHBA33 alright, and um, if you are using commands and you can see that I have two paths each path for one LAN and I have two LANs and same thing for my networking as in my vSphere for whether you're going to use command or you're going to use GUI you're going to do a proper setup and I'm just going to show you how this can be done in this case I have two port groups and iSCSI binding is currently not done because I have not configured same thing one active one unused and for iSCSI 2 same thing one active one unused all right switch around and let's go back to the adapter so now if you click on properties you see that we have a new tab here it's called network configuration clicking add will list all the port groups inside your networking and I'm just going to add uh, my iSCSI 1 port group and iSCSI 2 port group this is to do VM kernel port binding and you can see that if the port is compliant and under this port group policy if it is you will actually state compliance and we're going to just close, close and then the scan will be performed And here you can see it's been binded. Alright, and we see six paths. Of course, in my previous video for the vSphere 4, we also see the same thing six path although we have two paths per line. What happened is that you can actually perform a reboot after configurating, and you see that it will be refreshed to four, and you will have a duplicate of the path. And we'll come right back once the reboot is complete. Alright, here um, we have rebooted complete. And you can see that each device has four paths now after a reboot. I'm not sure is this due to my open file. I have not tried this on a physical iSCSI um, storage. Anyway, um, here we now have the correct path, which is 4, and uh, I'm now going to switch back the virtual machine, which is now on 11, we're going to move it to 12 now. Alright, now it's hosted on 12. And just to make sure, my 12 is actually 5.0 ESXi. And it's now hosted on my controller 1, which means controller 0, which is my first link, is now uh, not connected. So I have to use the second link to disconnect this to move this across. So, same thing. Um, I have a remote desktop with the same IP address. And constant pink is done and let me just now move over to this connect this
so it's now on controller let me just double check again controller 1 so it will be the first link to disconnect uh, the second link to disconnect uh, yep. so this is my second link and let's just disconnect this and let's see how the reaction is going to be like Okay, let's just time out. Coming out from. Okay, my remote desktop also consists of a timeout now. Alright, it's been resumed. So no HA has been kicked in and uh, it has been resumed, no problem at all. So let's now just go back to our ESX host. And yes, controller 1 is now dead, it has been swinged over to controller 0. So if I were to connect this back, Controller 1 should actually be active back. Alright, this is correct. Okay, this marks the end of the configurating for multipathing in vSphere 5, which is much easier than in vSphere 4 without the command and with the added GUI. Alright, thank you for watching.